Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Um, now today we've got a lovely puzzle for you with a lovely theme. Uh, it's been created by Sam Kappelman Lines of the UK Sudoku team to commemorate Richard Stolk's 50th birthday. Now Richard is one of the sort of masters of the puzzling community. Uh, he was responsible for organising last year's World Sudoku Championship and if you go to sites like Logic Masters Germany and search on, on Richard's name, I think on that site he goes under the pseudonym of Richard, um, you will find it, you know, he's published hundreds of absolutely quality Sudoku puzzles. Um, so Sam decided he would uh, wish him a happy birthday by creating this puzzle. And judging by what Sam wrote on the Logic Masters Germany website when he published this, he, he realized it was Richard's birthday an hour before midnight and then created this puzzle in an hour. Now, judging by the comments this puzzle has got, that is some feat indeed of constructing. Um, so uh, I think we've got a good puzzle today. Um, so, I mean, actually, we've been we've been had some stunning puzzles on the channel recently. So hopefully this will be yet another. Um, now, you, you'll be wondering how this works. Well, it's quite simple. It's a 50th birthday puzzle, so we need to make sure that the cells around the zero, they've got to sum up to 50. The cells on the five have to sum up to 50. And we've got this outside clue here, this leading diagonal. That's also got to sum up to 50. And that's all there is to it. So let's get cracking. If you want to have a go, Click on the link under the video that will take you to this page where you should be able to play along on whichever device is your preferred option. Now, let's go. We can put some a two here, look, because of these twos. I mean, the first thing I suppose I note when I look at this grid, though, is there's not much communication. You know, we've got these clusters of digits here, but they don't really interact heavily with each other. Um, you know, I know there's a five in one of these three squares. That puts a five at the top. I know there's a three in one of those two squares. And therefore a three in one of these two squares. Um, oh, hang on, I've got children. I'm sorry, that was my children telling me it's pancake day and I need to go and eat pancakes. So that puts me under some time pressure too. Um, right, let's go. So we need one, five and eight here. That places a one down in the bottom there. And also a five down there, look. Uh, we don't know enough about eights to be able to pencil mark those in. These squares have got to be four, six and nine which doesn't look that useful at all. Um, right, okay, so perhaps we're meant to use one of these lines now. These, this line must be the line to start with. Now, why do I say that? It's because these long runs of digits are gonna have a restriction. In fact, you can see the one and the two at the top make this line quite constrained. So the minimum value I could put in these yellow squares would be 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 which add up to 25. So this could be 25 as a minimum. We've got a 2 there as well so the minimum value for these squares would be 1, 3, 4, 5, 6 which is 19. So 19 and 25 is 44. Ah, and that's it. Yes, okay. So now we've got, if we think about that, we've got 21 here. Sorry, not 21, 25 plus 19. So that's 44. So we need six more. And we can just, just about do that with a two and a four. We can't have a one and a three in the column. So actually, this zero contains the minimum digits it possibly can in all positions. So I suppose we should pencil mark those in. That's got to be three, four, five, six, and seven. This has got to be one, two, not two, one, three, four, five, and six. This has got to be two. Ah, we've got a two over here. This is two and four, but the two here disambiguates that. We get a four and a two. This must be a four because we know there's a four along this chain. 
and in fact this is a 9 for the same reason. We've got a 6 in this chain, so we get that all sorted out. We need an 8 to complete the column. That fixes the 5. These squares have got to be 7, 8 and 9 in some order. And we, oh, we've got an 8 there, look, so we can disambiguate that one. And that one can't be a 1 or a 5 because of the 1, 5 here. This one can't be a five or a four, actually. Look, we've got the four in the box already. It's the problem with doing sort of this very comprehensive pencil marking. Ah, this column needs an eight and a nine to complete it, and we can fix that by the end. So that goes like that. These two squares have got to be 2 and 7 in some order. There's a 2 here, so that's a 2, that's a 7. Must be an 8 in one of those two squares. Uh, oh, in fact, look, we've got an 8 there, so that's 8 fixable. This must be a 4 or a 6. Six. One can't be a four. This must be a one, three, or a six. Ah, it makes a one, three, six triple. So these two should both be seven. Yes, seven, nine pair. You could have, we could have got that another way by noticing this seven, nine juxtaposition look. So now. Now what do we do? Well, one of those two squares has got to be a 2. Actually, we've got a 1 down in one of those three squares as well. An 8 in one of those top positions. A 2 in one of these two positions because of these 2s now. That can't be a 1. Let's tidy up that notation. This diagonal has too much, too much license, isn't there? 50 and 9 cells, so the average is 5-ish, five, 5 and a bit, which means you could have high and low numbers. I don't really see that that... Let's have a look at the 5. I have to say, I'm not immediately confident that this ah now hang on look we've got eight here so there's definitely an eight on the five in one of these three squares and a nine because of the nine down here and these three squares are one two and three that means those three squares have a minimum value of four, five, and six. Now, is there any reason? Well, they can't be four, five, and six because then we couldn't put a seven in the row. So seven's here and here. So in fact, there is a seven on this limb of the five. So actually, the minimum value of these three squares is four, five, and seven which is 16. The minimum value of these squares is 8, 9, and can we put a 4 in there? I think we can. So 16 plus 21 is 37. So that's the minimum value of these yellow squares, 37. I need to remember that somehow. Um, now that means that this, these squares here have to sum up to a maximum value of 13. Oh, now look, these two are in a 1, 2, in the row of 1, 2. So the minimum value of these two is 7. So the minimum value of, or the maximum value of these three squares is 6. Good grief. Uh, and this one... This one is important because it can't be a 2, 3, or a 4. Now, if I put a 5 in there, there's no way I can make two cells add up to 1. 
So this square is a one. Now we get a one, two pair there, look. So let's put that into the grid. Can't be a one now. Uh, so let's carry on looking at this. So we now know that the maximum value of these two squares is five. This one can't, can't be a one or a three. So this has to be a two or a four. Ah, but look, it can't be a four because if we make this a four, we know this will have to be a one, so we'd have to put a, I'll show you, if we put a four here and a one here, it all looks fine until we realize that now I have to put a two here and a two here, because we know this is a one, two pair and we'd pencil mark twos into these positions. So that's total nonsense. This cannot be a four, this has to be a two. Ah, and that's interesting as well, because now the logic implies that these squares don't add up to six after all, they add up to four. So we don't need bare minimums everywhere. This must be a one. Oh, hang on, this square is a naked single. Oh, that's so annoying. If we look at what possible value could this square have? It can't be a one, two, three, it can't be a four, and it can't be a six, seven, eight, or nine. That has to be a five. Oh, bother. So this is a three, seven pair. And we know there's a seven on here. No, there's a seven on there. So, text message now. Um, two, three. So, so if this was minimal and this this was minimal, we've got twenty one. 37, 37 and 4 is 41. The maximum value of these two squares is 9. That, and that's interesting a bit, isn't it? Because we've got a 1 and a 2 in the box. So the maximum value of this being 9 does limit this. We can never put a 7 in either of these two squares. And this one, 1, 2, 4. So this square here could be a 3. It could be a five. It can't be a six, because if I put a six in here, I'd have to put a three in this square. Um, and I can't. I also can't obviously put a one or a two. So this square is restricted. This is a three or a five. And this square, oh, this square can't be one, two or three. So this can be four, five or six. Seven here means there's now a seven in one of those two squares. So let's put that in and see if that helps us. Ah, now here's here's something nice. Here is something nice. Let's look at this square and ask, can this be a five? Now, if this is a five, this square's minimum value is four. So we know if this is five, this is four, and this would, these two are adding up to nine. Therefore, we know in order to make our 50 total work, everything else had to be a minimum. This would have to be four, eight, nine. This would have to be four, five, seven. But there is a problem with that, because if I make this five, this five, eight here is massive, because now, I can't put a five along there. This five, this five, and this five mean no five along there. Therefore, this is a three. Now, now that figures the three and the seven out, that gives us a seven here. Gives us a three here, look. Oh, 
sorry, I don't know what I'm pressing there. I don't... So that's a three because of the threes obviously dotted around the grid. We know there's a seven on this line, so it must be here. And we can see that indeed if we just do Sudoku. Um, this is not three anymore. Now, can we crack it from here? This, this can't be a three. This has to be a four or a six. Wow, okay, still not quite there, I don't think. Uh, but let's let's now look at this combination. If this was six eight nine, so that we know, we know this is either four eight nine or six eight nine. But if this is six eight nine, I have a feeling that's going to be very difficult because six eight nine plus seven is thirty plus seven more, so that's thirty seven. So I, if this is 689, I need these three squares to add up to 13. Now, well, 6 immediately can be ruled out because these two would then have to add to 7 and they can't. There's a 1, 2 and a 3 in the, in the block. If this is 5, that doesn't work either because that fixes a 5 here. It shifts a 5 off this line five would have to go here the minimum i could make these two squares would be four and six four plus six plus five is 15. that is too high i need them to be 13. so can we eliminate four? Oh, look if we if this is a four there's a four here so i can't put a four on the line the minimum these two squares could be would be five and six four plus five plus six is 15 again that's too big so this is not six eight nine this is definitely four eight nine oops so let's figure that out that's got to be a six now that puts a six on our line these two squares have got to be uh, four and nine i think So this is a six. That makes that a three and that a four. That a three. And can we go further? Ah, oh, now maybe I can. I can eliminate four from all of those squares. Seven. Oh. Bother. I don't. I still don't think I. I'm probably missing something there. Apologies if I am, but I can't see how to. I, but I guess if this is four eight nine, we can still do the maths again. Let's do it again. Twenty one, twenty eight, twenty eight, and seven is thirty five. So I now need these to add to fifteen. Now that's a much more realistic total. So. But I can immediately rule six out from this square because if this is six, um, the implication is that this, we know there's a six in here. So one of these two digits would also have to be a three that clashes. So this is not six. And now this six all of a sudden means that that has to be a six, which means this is a six. So, oh, this is so clever. So now this, these sixes resolve. We now know these two squares add up to nine. Look, the four here means that can't be a four. That's a five, that's a four. Good grief. Five here resolves the five eight at the bottom. It, <coughs> this is not an easy puzzle. Uh, this must be a four now. That's a nine. That fixes the nine and the four over that side. These squares have got to be uh, four, five, and 
eight. No, not what am I talking about? Uh, where is the four in here? Did I put the four and the nine the wrong way round? I feel like I must have done. Let me check that. Hang on. Uh, yeah, I did put them the wrong way round. That's a nine. That's a nine. That's a four. And that's a four. This is what happens when I try and rush. Um, this is five, eight, and nine. So. Okay. Uh, so now I can now I can use the other diagonal, can I? Let's have a look at this diagonal, and we can see we've got uh, sixteen, twenty. So these four cells have got to add up to thirty. Sure. Well, there's no way this can be a one uh, because I simply can't make these three squares big enough. So this is a six, this is a one, this is a one, therefore. Can't put a six in either of those squares. The four here tells us that this is a five, this is a four, this is a five. Six here means this is a five, that means that's a five, look. 8, 9, so this is a 4, this should be a 3, this has to be a 6 or a 7, and this has to be 6, 7 or 9, but with this being a 6 now, I need these three squares to add up to, oh there's a, actually let's make sure we eliminate everything, these three squares have got to add up to 24 so that this could be this could be a 7 this could be a 9 and this could be an 8 or this could be a 6 and these could both be 9s now is that ah but watch if this is a 7 we get the one of these clever things that happens with diagonal sudoku sometimes if this is a 7, that square's got to be a 7, and now that square's got to be a 7. And that's not going to work, because now I need to put 10 into this square. So this square can't be a 7, because putting a 7 here locks a 7 there. So this is a 6. Now hopefully that will help me. I now know these are both 9, which disambiguates. Oh yeah, this is now going to go well, I think. Um, this should be an 8, this should be a 9, this should be an 8. Yes. Happy birthday, Richard. Thank you very much to Sam. Thanks to the guys who recommended the puzzle. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And now I'm going to go and eat my pancakes. <laughs> See you tomorrow on Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>